Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter game development series where we are making Space Escape, a 2D top-down space shooter using the Flame Engine. In the previous video, we added this game over menu which is displayed when player health reaches zero. And using this menu, players can either restart the game or exit to main menu. So in this video, I'm going to add some power-ups which will make the gameplay more dynamic and fun. But before that, let's upgrade the Flame package to latest release candidate because latest version introduces some bug fixes to text component and better APIs for particle component. So let's head over to pub.dev page of Flame Engine. At the time of recording this video, release candidate 12 is the latest version. If you are watching this series in future, this version might be different for you. So if you understand how Flame Engine works and can solve issues related to breaking changes introduced in later versions, feel free to use the latest version. But if you did not understand what I just said, I would suggest you to stick with the exact version that I am using in this video. Also notice that here, I am not adding a caret sign at the beginning of this versioning string. This ensures that pubget pulls the exact version even if a newer version is available. Okay, so now that we have upgraded the flame package, let's fix some of the breaking changes that got introduced because of this upgrade. So if I go to enemy.dart file, you can see that in the accelerated particle, we are getting some errors. This is because now all the particle APIs use vector2 instead of offset. So to fix this problem, we just have to remove this dot two offset from acceleration, speed and position. Same issue is present in player.dart2. So I'll quickly remove dot two offset from there too. Now the final thing that we need to fix is config property of text component. For this I'll go to the game.dart file. Here you can see that for player score and player health text components, config property is showing some error. And this is because config is now moved inside text renderer. So to fix this I'll use the text renderer property to specify a text paint here. And inside this text paint, we can specify config using text paint config. Here, I'll set color to white, font to 12, and font family to bungee in line. Now, we can remove the old config property from this text component. I'll quickly copy and paste the same text renderer for player health component. Now, everything should work just fine. So let's build and test this. Okay, as you can see, the particle effects are still displayed correctly and text component for both score and health text are displayed in correct position. Now let's focus on adding the power-ups. So for the purpose of this video, I'll be adding 4 power-ups. Health, Freeze, Multifier and Nuke. I'll explain what each power-up will do once we start writing the code. But the very first thing that we need for adding any power-up is a sprite. For the health power-up, we can use one of the plus image from our existing sprite sheet. But for the others, there are no relevant images here. I tried searching for some free sprites on the internet, but none of them match the color scheme and style of this game. So to maintain the asset consistency, I've created sprites for rest of the power-ups. Link to these assets is in the description below. After adding these new assets to assets slash images directory of this project, We'll have to load them while initializing the game. For that, let's go to the onload method in game.dart file. Here, instead of using the images.load method, I'll use images.loadAll. This method allows us to load a list of image assets. So along with the original tile sheet, I'll also load the newly added four images. Okay, now let's add a new file called powerups.dart under the game folder. This file will contain all the code for the powerups. The very first thing that I'll add in this file will be a class called powerup. It will extend flame's sprite component and will act as the base class for all the powerups. Next, as all the powerups need to get their sprite from cached images of main game ref and they should also be able to detect if player spaceship overlaps them, I'll add has game ref, hitbox and collidable mixins to this class. Now inside this class, I'll quickly add a constructor which accepts position, size and sprite as input and forwards these parameters to base sprite component. Next, I want each power-up to be displayed in the game world for a fixed amount of time before getting destroyed. 
This means players will have limited time to pick up that power. For this, I'll add a late timer field in this class. And in the power up constructor, I'll initialize this timer with 3 seconds and this dot remove as the callback function. This means after 3 seconds of starting the timer, the power up will get destroyed. Now to make this timer work, we'll have to call timer.update in update method of this class and timer.start method in on mount of this class. Next, to make this power up collision aware, I'll create a circular hitbox with definition as 0.5 and add it as a hit shape using add shape method. Next, we also need to initialize the sprite for this power up. But as power up class is just a base class for all the other power ups, it cannot decide which sprite to use all by itself. That information should come from the derived classes. So to make things simple in derived classes, I'll add a method called get sprite which returns an object of sprite. And instead of providing a definition for this method, I'll make power up class an abstract class. Now the benefit of having power up as an abstract class is that we don't have to provide a definition for get sprite. And whenever anyone creates a new power by using power up as base class, they'll be forced to override and provide definition for this method. So now in the onMount method, we can initialize this dot sprite with get sprite. Here, get sprite of the derived class will get called, allowing it to control which sprite is used for the power up. Next, let's override the onCollision method so that we can detect when player picks up current power up. Inside this method, I'll first make sure that the other colliding entity is of type player. And if that is true, we can activate current power up. Now again, here we don't know what should happen when current power up gets activated because each power up will be different. So to fix this, I'll again add a virtual method called onActivated. And similar to get sprite, this one will also have to be overridden by derived classes to define what should happen when the power up gets activated. Now back in onCollision method, we can just call onActivated if other collidable is player. Here the overridden onActivated method of derived class will get called. And after that we just have to call remove so that the power up gets removed from the game world. This completes the code for our power up base class. Now let's use it to create some concrete power up classes. So let's start with the nuke power up. This power will destroy all the enemies when picked by the player. First, I'll create a new class called nuke extending power up. And as power up is an abstract class, we'll have to provide implementation for get sprite and on activated methods. Before defining get sprite and on activated, Let's add a constructor for this class which gets position and size as input and forwards those parameters to base class. Ok, now from this get sprite method, I'll return a new sprite object. This sprite needs an image and we can get the required image from gameref.images.from cache. Here I'll get nuke.png. Next in the onActivated method, we need to destroy all the enemies. And we already have code for doing that in player class. So I'll cut the temporary code from there and paste it in onActivated of nuke. Let's quickly import required files for command and enemy. And that is it. We just create and register a command to destroy all the enemies here. Now just to quickly test if this power up works, let's go to the onload method of game.dart file and add a nuke power to the game. For size and position, I'll copy the values we had used for player component above. I'll just move the power 150 pixels away from the center so that it does not overlap with player component right at the beginning. And finally, I'll add this power to game world using add method. Now before I run this code, I'll go to the onMount method of power up class and comment out timer.start for some time. This will make sure that power up does not get destroyed before I pick it up. Ok, so now let's build and run this code. And as you can see, we now have the nuke power in game world. And when I pick up that power, all the enemies get destroyed. So this seems to be working fine. Next, let's add the health power up. This power will increase player's health when picked. So for that, I'll just duplicate the nuke class and I'll rename nuke to health. In the get sprite method, I'll use the plus icons png. Next, in the onActivated method, 
we'll have to register a command targeted towards player component. And in the action callback of this command, we just have to increase player's health. But as health is a private member of player, we cannot modify it from outside the player class. So to solve this, I'll go to player class and add a method called increase health by. This method will take an integer as input and will increase current health by that integer. And to make sure that health never goes beyond 100, I'll clamp it here. And now back in onActivated method of health, I'll just call increase health by method on player passing in 10 as input. This will make sure that player's health increases by 10 whenever this power up gets activated. Again, to test this, I'll go to on mount of space escape game class and replace temporary new power with health power. Now, if I build and run this, you can see that the health power is visible in game world. And if I pick up that power, player's health increases by 10 points. This indicates that this power is also working fine. Okay, now let's add the freeze power. On activation, this power will pause all the enemies for a certain amount of time. So again, I'll duplicate the health class and rename it as freeze. The getSprite method for this will use freeze.png for creating sprite. And in the onActivated method, I'll register a command for all the enemies. And in the action callback, I'll freeze the enemy by calling freeze method. Now let's go to the enemy class and add this freeze method. So here at the end, I'll add a method called freeze. And to actually freeze the enemy, we can just set the speed property to zero. But we'll also have to reset it to original value after some time. And for this, I'll add a timer to this class called freeze timer. Now in the enemy constructor, we can initialize this timer with a limit of two seconds and callback which resets the speed to original value. Next, let's call freeze timer dot update in the update method of this class so that it tracks time. And then in the freeze method, we can start the freeze timer when speed is set to zero. I'll add freeze timer dot stop before start just to make sure that we restart the timer from zero every time freeze is called. Now let's go to the onload method of game.dart file and replace health with freeze so that we can test this new power. So if I build and run this again, you can see that now we have the freeze power here. And as soon as I pick it, all the existing enemies get paused for two seconds. But as you saw, new enemies are still getting spawned and they are not freezed. And to stop this from happening, we'll have to freeze the enemy manager component as well. So to do that, I'll register one more command in onActivated of freeze. This command will be targeted towards enemy manager. And in the action callback, I'll call freeze method on enemy manager. Now let's go to the enemy manager class and add code to freeze it for two seconds. First, I'll add a freeze timer in this class. Then in the constructor, Let's initialize it with a duration of 2 seconds and a callback function which will start the enemy spawn timer again. Now at the very end, let's add the freeze method in which we'll first stop the spawn timer and then start the freeze timer. And finally, to make the freeze timer work, I'll call freeze timer dot update in update method of this class. Now if I hot reload the game and pick up the freeze power, all the enemies are paused and no new enemy gets spawned for 2 seconds. Ok, so now let's add the last power up, which is multi-fire. When this power is active, player spaceship will fire 3 bullets at the same time at slightly different angles. So once again, let's duplicate the freeze class, rename it to multi-fire and use the multi-fire.png image in get sprite. The onActivated method for this power will be simple. We just register a single command for player which calls shoot multiple bullets method on player component. Now let's go to the player class and add this shoot multiple bullets method. Next, to indicate that multifier is active, I'll add a boolean member in this class called shoot multiple bullets with its initial value as false. And in the shoot multiple bullets method, I'll set this flag to true. Now similar to all the other powers, this power will also be time bound and will get deactivated after some time. So for this, I'll add a timer called powerup timer in this class. 
then in the constructor let's initialize with a duration of 4 seconds and a callback which resets shoot multiple bullets to false. Next in the joystick action method after creating and adding the first bullet we can check if shoot multiple bullets is true. If it is true we'll have to add two more bullets. So for that I'll just copy the existing bullet creation code and put it inside a for loop. And notice that this for loop starts with int i is equal to minus 1, checks if i is less than 2 and increments its value by 2. This essentially runs the loop twice with values of i being minus 1 and plus 1. I've done this on purpose so that we can rotate the travel direction of both these bullets by equal amount clockwise and anticlockwise. But to rotate the travel direction of bullets, we first need to expose it outside the class. If I go to bullet class, you can see that right now the direction is hard coded to 0, minus 1 in update method. So to be able to change the direction from outside the class, I'll add a new vector to field called direction with initial value of 0, minus 1. And in the update method, we can use this direction to change position of bullet. Now back in player.dart, after creating the bullet and just before adding it to the game world, I'll rotate bullet.direction by pi by 6 radians. And to make sure that both the bullets rotate in the opposite direction, I'll multiply this value by i. So one bullet will rotate by negative pi by 6 and other one with positive pi by 6. Next, in the shoot multiple bullets method, we can start the power up timer after setting shoot multiple bullets to true. And finally, in the update method of this class, Let's call powerUptimer.update so that it updates correctly. So to test this, I'll go to game.dart and replace previous freeze power with multiplier. And since this is the last power for this video, I'll uncomment the timer.start from onMount of PowerUp class. Now let's build and run this code to see if it works. Okay, and as you can see, we now have the new power in the game world. And if I don't collect that power, it will get destroyed after few seconds. Now let's hot reload so that we can test this new power. Okay, so now if I pick up this power and try to fire, you can see that multiple bullets are fired at the same time. And this power stays active exactly for 4 seconds. After which we go back to single bullet. And that was all for this video. In the next video, we'll most probably add some kind of a power-up manager which will take care of spawning random power-ups at random locations in the game world. It will be pretty much similar to enemy manager. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.